Hey guys! Serena, welcome back to the channel. So it's a beautiful spring day in Seoul and yeah, just decided that I wanted to come out to Karasukiya. It's a little bit of shopping, people watching, window shopping and hopefully get a good bite to eat as well. So once in a while, I get these comments on my videos uh, saying, Serena, your English is so great. Where do you learn your English from? So I just wanted to clarify that I was born and raised in Canada, so my native language is English and my secondary language is Korean. Now, I've been living in Korea for about 10 years and back when I first came, I would say my fluency was somewhere around limited working proficiency. So that means I could get around pretty well in like casual settings, but Hi! But I sometimes had difficulty when it came to more professional settings. Wow! <laughs> okay, <laughs> he's gone. Um, anyway, yeah, so I was pretty good with casual settings. It was just um, in the professional setting, uh, like my work. Sometimes I had difficulty, um, you know, expressing how I felt or what I think. So yeah, that was it and then, you know, flash forward 10 years later and I consider myself fluent in Korean, both in casual settings and at work. So I wanted to share with you just some ways that have really worked for me in terms of just improving my Korean in the most efficient and effective ways and I feel like you can apply this for any language, it doesn't have to be just Korean. So if you guys are interested, keep on watching. So the first thing, one of my not my main reason, but definitely one of the reasons why I wanted to come to Korea was to spruce up my Korean. So yeah, I think there was definitely a huge benefit of me moving here because I wanted to improve my Korean. And I really feel like maybe not everyone can do this, but I highly, highly encourage, if you can, to travel to the country that speaks the target language because it's one thing to speak the language and know the language and all, know all the vocabulary. It's another to be living the language because I truly believe that language is, like if you want to learn a language, it's really, you're not just learning the language, you're learning the culture behind the language. Not even behind it, it's attached to the language. So it's very different to come live in the country and just really experience how people actually utilize the language in everyday life. So yes, travel to the target language country. Karasukiya used to be one of my favorite places back in my 20s. <laughs> uh, back when I was not married and without kids, I used to come here shopping, uh, hang out with girlfriends, go to nice cafes and things like that. I don't come here as often anymore, maybe a couple times a year, but it's always nice because there's always a ton of people here walking on the streets and today's just such a gorgeous day. Oh, one little tip if you want to come to Karosuke. If you happen to be in Korea in the fall, it's actually awesome to come to Karosuke because they're famous for their ginkgo trees. And so if you see, I don't know if you can see. Okay, so there's like little trees um, on the roads and those are all ginkgo trees and the and the leaves turn yellow in the fall so this whole street is just like yellow and at night the yellow is like glowing from the street lights and it's so beautiful so I highly recommend you come to Karasukiya um, during that season so nice give you guys is don't just learn a language in just one medium so make sure that you're kind of like surrounding yourself with all sorts of different media where you can 
really have that input of that target language. So watch a lot of TV or movies and read books or listen to books, listen to music, anything that involves that target language. Back in the day when I first came to Korea, I used to really like love watching dramas. And I think it's really important when you are watching TV uh, in that target language to not watch it with the subtitles in English. The best is if you watch the show, but with like that language is subtitles. So if I'm watching Korean dramas, it's nice to have that the Korean subtitles at the bottom and sometimes I can actually select it when I'm watching it online. But um, yeah, it's nice to have that because then you can look at the words. But if you're constantly just having the English subtitles there, that just becomes kind of like a crutch and then you end up just like reading the English subtitles all the time. So yeah, nowadays I don't really watch that much TV because I don't want to say I quit TV because that's not really true, but I do watch very little to no TV uh, every week. But the one thing I do do is watch a lot of YouTube and one YouTube channel that I absolutely love is Kim Mi Young. I think her channel is called MKTV and I'll link it for anyone who is interested. She's a motivational speaker here in Korea and she is just amazing. Like she just has so much knowledge and wisdom about human relationships and philosophy and just her perspective on life is just amazing and I love listening to her speak because not only is she an eloquent speaker but I also think that she's just so engaging and so motivational and it's just really interesting to just listen to her talk so yeah I highly recommend just um, getting a lot of input in that language. One of the biggest um, ways that I improved my Korean also was when I had kids because at one point I felt like they were so much stronger in English so I wanted to read them more books in Korean and reading them to reading them uh, children's books in Korean like completely changed my Korean learning game like when you read children's books the words are quite simple and children's books in general are very animated very emotional very colorful they use really nice language and you can really play with it and just have fun with it and and yeah it's not like if you're reading the news every single word is going to be difficult and every single word you're going to be like ah oh, you got to look it up and then it just ends up becoming really really discouraging so i highly recommend for you to go to the library, pick up a children's book in whatever target language you're learning, and yeah, and go through that. And there will be like a few words that you might not know, but it's not as like, it's not as discouraging as if you were reading something that's just way out of your level. And yeah, reading to my kids has vastly improved my Korean. Um, the next thing is to record yourself and listen to yourself. And I've, I know for some people, it might be a little bit like awkward and even like kind of make you cringe, but I highly recommend you do it because the way, I mean, you probably have an ear for what native speakers sound like. So when you listen to yourself, you can kind of catch what parts you're kind of making a mistake in and tweak it and adjust it and keep practicing and record yourself, listen, record yourself and keep on doing that until you finally get something that you really like. And I think that's so important. And you know what's funny? If you keep on doing that, you get so used to your voice and you're going to start loving your voice and it's not going to be like, oh, I hate my voice. So yeah, I highly recommend you do that. It's so important to just check yourself because when you're speaking, sometimes you don't sound like what you think in your head. In your head, you probably sound like you, you probably think like you sound so good, but um, in reality, you kind of don't sometimes. So yeah, just check yourself and monitor yourself in that way.
the olive bread. Mm. The next tip is to get a tutor and I think as an adult it's having a tutor is so different from when you had a tutor when you were kid because when you're a kid it's really the tutor who leads the lesson but as an adult you can choose what you want to learn and you can basically lead the lesson I have a tutor for Mandarin currently and I did have a tutor for Korean maybe just for a few months uh, the reason for that was because I really wanted to improve my Korean uh, in particular for TV because I was hosting a show that required me to speak more Korean so she was helping me with that and I was very specific about what I wanted to learn so same thing for Mandarin when you're an adult you can never really like be perfect at a language so I think you have to be very specific about what you want to learn and why you want to learn it so you have to figure out the why first so for Mandarin I just want to be able to take my kids to a city in China or go to Taiwan and just be able to be functional to get around in cabs to order things at restaurants to buy things book a hotel things like that and yeah and just be able to just go about my day so that's my main goal so when it comes to my Chinese lesson it doesn't make sense for me to learn anything outside of that so yes we do have a textbook but I tell my tutor okay I really want to practice this today and we go over that for like 30 minutes and basically I just tell her exactly what I want because honestly I work I have two kids I really don't have time for um, for learning things that I really don't need. And I think just even that one hour and a half out of my week is quite a bit. So I just wanna make sure that I'm getting the most out of that tutoring session. So yes, if you can afford a tutor, I really suggest that you get one. So the next tip is to uh, memorize vocabulary words on a daily basis and I know for some people it's kind of like oh if I can't I just learn the language organically and that's all great too but really you're never going to improve unless you expand your vocabulary and it's really important that you do so whether it be one word a day or five words a day or ten expressions a day whatever you can handle do it because that's the only way you can really expand um, expand the way you use that language you, otherwise you're just going to be like limited and stuck in that level so you have to memorize new words now one of the tricks that i've been using since i was in high school is to write down um, the vocabulary words i feel like instead of just trying to memorize it i'm not only an audible learner but a visual learner as well so i feel like not just memorizing but also writing things down really helps for it to like get stuck in my brain so um, anytime I learn a new Korean word I jot it down in my notebook and and I make sure I go over it the next day so reviewing so memorizing and then reviewing those words and and then of course applying it so trying to use it is so important that was really good okay so my last tip is we live in a day and time where it's so much easier to learn a new language and that's because the world is so much more connected and we have so many useful tools specifically apps and YouTube channels and uh, blogs that really just offer lessons and advice for free so I highly recommend that you you know find those sources one of my favorite um, YouTube channels for learning Korean is TTMIK my good friend Hyun Han runs the channel it's talk to me in Korean if you guys are interested in learning Korean yeah it's an awesome channel they have great lessons that are very specific to certain expressions or certain themes and yeah there is so much out there and it's all for free extra time before my kids get off school so I thought I'd come to Hangang since it's a beautiful day and I don't want to waste the sunshine
But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and found it really helpful. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. And if you're not subscribed, subs blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and if you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. Just hit the red button and don't forget to hit the notifications bell. That way you can get all my updates. Have yourselves an amazing day. And I will see you guys soon. Bye!